Wake me up when September ends. Hi guys, I'm Marty Gore and this is another quarterly Q&A of this year, the third. The last one will be of course in December, probably somewhere before Christmas I think, because I might be on a break there, I don't know. Uh, but anyway, uh, if you need to ask a question, you can just leave it down below in the comments and I will also make a post like about two weeks before recording the next Q&A so that you can ask me some more questions about more recent events. There are three months breaks in between these episodes, so um, I think that's fair. So let's go! I have a random question. Are there any Americans watching your channel? Yes, actually a lot. Um, last time I checked, my uh, like the demographics from last year, um, actually the United States is um, like second, but it's really close to Poland in percentage because Poland is almost twenty two percent, and the United States is um twenty point seven percent, so it's almost the same. Um, and when I compare it to years ago, like right after I stopped uh recording stuff about Poland and I went back to Sims, I remember that my demographics were like sixty percent Poland. Uh, I'm not sure uh, how I checked that, if that was yearly or lifetime, because when I check lifetime, Poland will definitely be bigger. But for recent, uh, it's actually pretty even. And of course, I have a Polish channel where all my fellow Polish people are uh, welcome, and it's pretty much only, like, closed only for people who can understand Polish. Uh, so some Ukrainians also watch me there, or Czech people, because they kind of understand what I say. Like, some of it, you know, the languages aren't that similar. But yeah, here I'm actually glad that I'm getting a more global audience, a more multi-country, you know. Uh, the third demographic, if you're curious, is the United Kingdom, and it's 6.6%. So, like, my two biggest demographics are definitely Poland and the US. What is your favorite non-Sims game? I am pretty sure I answered that already somewhere at some point, but Heroes of Might and Magic 3. This hasn't changed. Recently you've been to the UK and you've seen April, as in April Black. I'm wondering how often you've found yourself using English in public and private conversation as well as thinking in English. The thing with being in the UK is that I kind of feel like there's a language barrier of some kind because I speak fluent American and I don't know if it's because the UK is closer to Jupiter or something, but I definitely feel a lot of weight when I try to talk to <laughs> British people. No one got that reference and now I sound like an idiot. That was a joke. But yeah, I do feel like, like, before I went to London, I was like, okay, I have to unhillbilly my English to actually talk properly to English people. Um, and I, as a Polish person, also, I really can't get used to uh, being asked how I am without requiring an answer, you know, like, it's just so different. Um, and also, I feel like I am being rude all the time because I forget about the pleases, uh, because in Polish, not always you say please, sometimes you can make a sentence in a polite way without actually saying please, right? So in English, I forget about it a lot. But when it comes to how often I actually talked in English and like uh, communicated with people, actually not really that much. Uh, because I would, I, I was with my boyfriend who speaks Polish and April Black also speaks Polish, if you <laughs> didn't know that. She lives in England, she has been living in England for quite some time, but she is actually Polish. Uh, so we talked in Polish. But yeah, in public I am still, I thought it was only a Manchester thing, because, you know, Mancunian is a very specific kind of um, accent, let's say, and kind of like a dialect, I guess. So when I was in Manchester a few times before, uh, I thought the barrier was just because um, the Mancunian accent is just kind of like different, you know, and it's just harder for me to understand. Uh, but actually, it's just like British English. I can't do British English. It's... <laughs> I always feel like such a moron when I try to talk to British people, even though 
I chose this for myself. I chose to. I prefer the American English. Actually, recently I've been calling it Canadian English. <laughs> uh, but um, I willfully am speaking more on the American side. I use American pronunciation. I, I try at least. And American vocabulary. Uh, but uh, yeah, still I feel like a kind of like a stupid person sometimes when I talk to British people. So I wasn't really using a lot of English on vacation just when I wanted to order coffee or something like that. So it was like really micro <laughs> interactions. But when it comes to just simple everyday life, I do use English quite a lot, I think. Uh, sometimes I even make notes in my Sims notebook in English, even though I don't have to because it's for the Polish channel, for example. Uh, sometimes to some things, English is the default for me. Also, I like to have certain applications um, set to English, like I use English Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. Uh, only the system is the thing that I like to have in Polish because I don't want to like break something when I go into the settings or whatever. So in everyday life I think I am more of a passive English consumer. I'm more of a consumer because I watch a lot of stuff in English as well. Uh, but when it comes to using the language it's uh, only to make some notes sometimes. And I think uh, in speaking, I think in English more than I actually speak it in my everyday life because I don't really have that many opportunities to speak English. But I type in English a lot. For example, my Twitter is all English. I rarely post anything in Polish, pretty much only when it's an answer to someone else. And thinking in English is not really something that happens spontaneously in my head. Uh, it has to be like a certain topic uh, that I think about or like thinking about talking about something on the channel or whatever, or like imagining that I'm talking to someone or just anything like that. Because of course the default of my thoughts is Polish. People who don't have the inner monologue now have no idea what I'm talking about. Like the 4% of people who don't have that. Best regards to you guys. Do you watch YouTube in your free time? If yes, who, what did you watch recently? Maybe top five. Can we make two separate top fives for Polish and English? Because it would be so hard to just pick five out of all the people that I watch. So yes, I do watch a lot of YouTube, okay? Not really that much Sims stuff, though. Just sometimes. These days, I think five most watched Polish YouTubers by me are Dominik Boss. Definitely the most watched. I watch almost every single thing that he posts and I am a huge fan. I also watch his regular streams and I am actually a member of this channel. It's kind of like commentary, but it's not like mean commentary, you know what I mean? He's very diplomatic, always tries to understand the two sides and everything, uh, and also gives people the platform to speak for themselves sometimes so it's um it's really cool and also i tend to watch people that i agree with a lot and dominic is definitely one of them the next one is krzysztof m Mai. he is an educator uh he has a phd um in polish studies but he mostly works in the field of video games, actually, and, like, uh, creating worlds, like, fantasy worlds and stuff like that. Uh, he is um, also very into fantasy, like, books, which is totally not something that I do, but I respect that. Um, but what brought me to this channel was, uh, it was actually Dominique, but um, <laughs> uh, the topic that um, made me keep watching the channel was uh, all the stuff that Krzysztof does about education and the education system in Poland that it's um, not the best, honestly. Basically anything that is wrong with the Polish education, education system, he just points it out, you know? Everyday Hero, yes, this is an English um, nickname, uh, but he is actually Polish and he talks about, well, you can actually see <laughs> on his banner that it's veganism, atheism and altruism. Those are Polish words, by the way. Uh, technically. He just encourages people to eat less meat for the environment and, and for the animals as well. And sometimes he also points out some like weird 
things that people say about not eating meat or like, you know, like um, the stuff that Jordan Peterson was saying and like Polish, some of the Polish politicians also um, say weird things and he just confronts um, and gives really good arguments based on like science and everything. So uh, it's very science based and also I think I just trust this channel a lot. Uh, when it comes to information about this stuff, uh, so I really recommend. It's not a huge channel. The fourth one is Dramcha. I am also oh I, I am also a member of this channel and I am also a member of Dramcha's channel. Um, we actually kind of know each other in person. Uh, I mean we've met. I was at, uh, even at her house and stuff, but we only met once, and she's really cool. Um, and I also like her content. Um, I know that she watches my content, mostly the stuff that where I only talk about things that are not related to Sims that much. I don't watch every single thing that she posts. Like, uh, she does a lot of stuff, uh, a, a lot of kind of like commentary about TV shows, and I am not really that interested in those t TV shows in particular, uh, like Top Model or something. So I mostly watch her videos about other things, maybe again some commentary about other YouTubers, or if TV shows and something that actually interests me, and also I listen to her podcast regularly. Zdupy from the ass, <laughs> but censored with a V. V actually doesn't exist in uh, the Polish alphabet, just a fun fact. He is very vulgar. He has a lot of tattoos and uh, a lot of people don't like him, especially like conservative Polish media or whatever. Um, he swears a lot, but he also has a lot of... Um, Interesting things to say, he makes this kind of like show um, where he just comments on recent events that happened anywhere, in politics, in pop culture, in on TV, um, amongst YouTubers, on the internet in general. Um, but this is definitely a YouTuber that is not for everyone, uh, although he is very popular. He has 1.5 million subscribers. So when we're talking about English-speaking channels... Chad Chad. I love her. I love how she points out just the stupidest things, mostly that happen on TikTok. I am not really that much into TikTok, but seeing what weird crap happens there is just like, wow. And she is also super funny. It's one of a kind, let me tell you. So from English channels, I also watch two doctors. I don't watch any doctors on, on Polish YouTube, but when it comes to American YouTube, I watch two, which is Dr. Mike, of course, super popular, and Mama Dr. Jones, who is, uh, like, Dr. Mike is, uh, like, a general practi pr practitioner, general practitioner. <laughs> GP, uh, and he just talks about health in general, uh, and Mama Dr. Jones is an ob uh, and she just talks about, like, reproductive health and stuff like that, and uh, I really like what she does, like, the kind of activism that she does, um, but she also gives a lot of information about reproductive health in general, uh, so I think if you have a uterus, if you menstruate, um, then definitely recommend watching this channel to just find out more about your own, you know, guts and stuff. Um, because even if you think that you know a lot, you might not know as much as she shows on her channel. Another one is Anna Akana, of course. Oh yeah, I actually support her or, or on Patreon, and I kind of forgot that I do that. It's only like one dollar or something. Uh, but yeah, I do that. She is an actor, and also she started off as kind of like a comedy kind of channel, um, but um, at some point she also got into... Like, she's been around for like 10 years or something, right? At some point she also started doing this, um, like, psychology stuff, uh, talking about certain mechanisms that we can have in our brains and, you know, or how to cope with certain stuff, of course, still recommending therapy and everything. She's also really funny and she's really freaking smart. I admire her a lot and I've been watching her forever, pretty much. I think I started in, like, 2016 or something, maybe even earlier, and I am super faithful to this channel. I've watched pretty much every single upload, almost every single upload since 
the time that I started watching the channel. Actually, for the English channels, we'll do six, because for the last one, I am torn between two. Jamie Dodger, which is a transgender guy who talks about LGBTQ rights and uh, kind of make, makes fun of, like, homophobic memes, and uh, but also do, does some more wholesome stuff, not only negativity. He also comments on very serious issues with being trans and uh, talks about his journey, with being trans, and uh, I think it's a very valuable content to know of. Um, If you want to know more about what it means to be trans, how it works, and stuff like that, either buy his book or just watch the channel. And the last one is Deep Dive. I recently found this channel, uh, and you can see that I watched some of the stuff. Thanks to this channel, I realized that I really like this kind of deep dive content. Like, you get one topic or you get one person, one celebrity, and you just, like, research every single thing that you can find and just talk about it and present the whole story of this one person. Uh, I really recommend the video about Shania Twain. Uh, It's freaking heartbreaking, but I think it's something people need to know. Okay, that was long. If you weren't a YouTuber, what would you like to do for a living? What would I like to do? Oh, man. Oh, wow. Um, I always found it fascinating to do either, like, editor work, you know, like, um, like someone writes a book and I can edit it, like, look for uh, language mistakes that they made or, like, you know, be like, okay, this whole part of the book is redundant, let's get rid of it. Um, and also, like, um, you know, fonts and all of the graphics that come with text. Uh, I always, uh, really liked that. Um, and also when I had, uh, my librarianship, um, like, practice, you know, I saw, Uh, the person who was fixing books in a big library and like there was this small section of the library that actually there was one person who was just like doing uh like new covers of the books or like just fixing them so that they don't fall apart especially older books and I really like that as well uh but I don't think I would be very good at it. <laughs> but what what would I realistically do for a living if I weren't a YouTuber? Uh, probably I would just stick to teaching English. That's it. Maybe I would get better at it. You never know. What advice would you give to someone who is starting a Sims channel? What type of content do you think is the, is the best? There were two similar questions about that. Um, from what I've seen... Uh, On my channel and other newer channels that are just starting out and kind of like building an audience, I see that um, just making content that is short and interesting is a good start, I think. Uh, Like um, making videos about like fun facts about the game and like certain mechanics that not everyone might know and stuff like that. Like what I do basically sometimes, but also a bunch of other channels as well. Um, Or like, you know, trying to break the game or something. Of course, now I'm talking about Sims 2 specifically. But, well, trying to break the game actually applies to The Sims 4 even. You can always try. So I think that... I I think it probably isn't the best idea to start a long gameplay at the very start of your channel, even though it's pretty much exactly what I did on my Polish channel. But my... uh, The series that made me... Made that channel really blow up was um, the one about... Polish English translations of The Sims. So uh, there was another thing that kind of brought the audience. And this, and it was actually the thing that I was talking about, you know? Just some interesting stuff that you can point out in a short video um, that people can learn something new from that video. I think it really brings a lot of attention and also is valuable as content. I'm not saying that gameplays are not valuable as content, but that is just more interesting, you know? It's valuable in a way that people can actually learn something. And kind of in a nutshell, you know? I would also say find your niche and don't try to be like other Sims YouTubers because a lot of other 
like older Sims YouTubers started off with a different thing that would be that then would be trending now. Does that sentence make even, make sense? Even, uh, you know, like back in the day when someone did like generations let's play it was super popular because there was nothing else like that uh so the point is to do something that is nothing like, like nothing else you know um but also marking it with a sims topic so that people who are actually interested in sims will come to your channel uh, it's it's really complicated though, and um, you you never know what will happen with a certain video. I still don't know how well a certain video will actually do, uh, and I've been here for a while. So I would also say patience, a lot of patience. What are you looking forward to for the future of this channel? Do you have specific goals, and what are those? What are those? <laughs> I had to. I don't really have that many goals. I think my goals mostly are videos that I want to make. In the previous episode, I mentioned that I have a whole ass calendar for uh, for the channel's things. Uh, and I plan out videos like two months ahead and uh, and stuff like that. So like, you know, I have hopes sometimes that when I, when it takes me like 50 hours to make a video that it, it will actually do well. I just want this job to kind of like make sense. I don't really have any goals like uh, reach 50, 50,000 subscribers until the end of the year or something because I also know that the subscriber count is not the count of actual people who watch your content uh, so especially with subscribers I am just not um, having any any like aims that I want to do I just want to be financially stable and I just plan out videos for the future and that's it and I, I try to come up with new ideas and that's it I'm totally late for the Q&A with this question, not really. But are you bi? I can't remember if you've mentioned it and I hope it's okay to ask. This is an okay question to ask when it's a Q&A and I can just select the questions that I want to answer and just skip the ones that are not very comfortable. But I need to say that I do really hope that you don't ask this question to random people in real life. No one owes anyone this information. But I will answer the question. This is gonna be long, so it needs a new battery. Most of the time, like 90% of the time, I consider myself a straight ally. Because I've been in a straight relationship for over 10 years, and I've never been in a queer relationship. But if I may quote fake gamer girl, uh, what she once said, I feel the gay. Whenever I go to parades, in Gdańsk. Uh, I've been three times already, three years in a row. I pretty much always have some kind of bisexual accent. Uh, this year it was nails and I'm really proud of them. I even mixed nail polishes to get that perfect purple color because I do feel like bi people, um, of course trans as well, but I kind of relate to bisexuality and I feel like bi people just need more attention and more validation um, because even within the LGBTQ they can have it really hard like people telling them you know you should just make up your mind oh so we're just gay you know stuff like that like um devaluating the even the existence of bisexuality so um I kind of feel like an advocate for bi people. I just want them to be more visible. So I always have some kind of accent um, in the colors that I wear or like a pin or nails or something like that uh, in the parades. But I don't entirely relate to that label. I'm just like bi curious, pan curious maybe, I have no idea. I think I could easily be in a relationship with a trans guy, for example. I think it would be possible for me to be uh, with a woman as well, but I have no idea. I, I would have to check. I am the kind of person that would have to check. Also, I have both mommy and daddy issues, so they also are in the way of me realizing if I'm actually bi. I know that mostly people don't have to check, they just know, but I personally would have to, like, really be in a relationship with a woman, for example, to really be sure that I am bi. Because especially with bisexuality, in women, it's kind of hard to differentiate um, if I just 
think that she's pretty <laughs> or something like you know uh when you like the opposite gender sometimes you just go for the default and you don't really think about the other gender that much like your own gender that much or it might feel really different when you uh have a crush on a guy or when you have a crush on a girl and it's just kind of feel like the girl stuff is just like yeah whatever it's just it's nothing so yeah short answer i don't know also oddly specific question <laughs> directed straight at bisexuality towards me. It's like, do I give a vibe? It's only if I give a bi vibe. <laughs> I wanted to ask you where you got most of your Sims 4 conversions for Sims 2 and if you could make a video about your CC in general. Making a video about my custom content would be a lot, but I can tell you that when it comes to conversions specifically, it's either DD or Minicule Sim or... 4 to 2, Sims 4 to 2 on Tumblr. What dish from every part of Sims would you like to eat the most or at least try? In The Sims 2, definitely baked Alaska. I'm really curious of that cake. Uh, I know that it exists in real life, but I've just never had it, never even heard of it before The Sims. For Sims 3, I think eggs Machiavellian. Uh, in, the, in the Polish version, they are called an omelette, which doesn't make any sense. Uh, but it's, um, it's a weird kind of egg recipe because it's like fried egg and also like watermelon or something so I, I just I'm just really curious about that and in the sims 4 there are so freaking many I think the vegetable dumplings kind of sound nice I if I ever play the game I often make my sims uh like make this dish because it's simple they don't need to have a lot of cooking skill it's just there uh, and also it just like sounds really nice. What is your favorite Sims 3 world? For me, I'm still trying to pick one. I do have a lot of um, positive feelings and, uh, and a lot of nostalgia as well for Twinbrook um, because it's a town where I played the most, I think, because I remember a lot of the Sims, a lot of the you know, like Sims from other families. I probably don't remember as much now, but I, I just played so many times in this neighborhood. And also the, the swamp area is just like, I don't know, there's something about it. But also Monte Vista is a really, really pretty town. I, I didn't play it uh, that much, uh, but it's just so nicely made, like, you know, visually. Would you like a remastered The Sims 2 with updated graphics, fixed code, and optimized for modern PCs? Or does playing the old game have its own charm? I wouldn't mind having a fixed version in a way that, you know, like graphics rules is updated, so you have a normal resolution, and like shadows are fixed, and um... What else? Uh, you know, all of the fixes, like pink soup fix, like memory, like texture memory stuff. Also, recently I got my first pink soup in The Sims 2. This is freaking crazy. I was so happy. <laughs> Not really happy, but you know, it was just like, whoa, it, it actually finally happened. But updated graphics or something like that, I think that could go the wrong way. So any other cosmetic stuff, uh, like what The Sims look like and stuff like that, I... I'd rather just use uh, like default repl replacements for that and just do it my own way. Uh, but just like the basic fixes that everyone has to do at this point, sure. In The Sims 2, when do you think a child has perfect genes? I love your genetics video, so that's why. Thank you, that's really sweet. Um, I think the perfect genetics are when I can see both parents in... A child and I kind of feel like they are their own person like in looks like in real life I actually have an example of really good genetics mix which is Seth Burb in my old Pleasant View he is a descendant of Bo Broke there was like a surrogate situation so there was also a sim that I created on the way but he still has Bo's eye shape I think and he was mixed uh, with um, 
fourth template guy and he kind of doesn't look like his parents at all but kind of does when I look at certain parts of his face which is fascinating and I love that he just looks like a completely new sim but you can see that he actually takes after his parents he is just so weirdly mixed like his eye shape is from his mom his uh, nose is from his dad and cheekbone situation is of course mixed in a crazy way as The Sims 2 does sometimes. Um, and the lips are from his mom again. Uh, and it's just like, he he's absolutely perfect when it comes to mixing. So that's it. Fortunately, the recording wasn't very long, so it won't take a lot of time to edit. And um, yeah, you can still leave uh, questions down below. It will be around Christmas when I do the last Q&A of this year and probably ever. <laughs> I, I will stick to streams uh, to interact with you guys because this seems a little bit too artificial, you know what I mean? Um, just like a little too uptight, a little too like planned out or whatever. It will be around that time, so if you're curious about something, uh, it can be like in the Christmas topic as well, uh, or like anything that is in between September and Christmas, so, so like Halloween or whatever. Will you ever change your outro? No. Thank you very much for watching, subscribe, like the video, and see you in the next one. Bye.